this path we're following. There's a way in which you could call it sensitivity training. Getting more and more sensitive to the way the mind creates suffering for itself. As you deal with one layer of more blatant suffering and peel that away, then you find there's another more subtle one. In fact, this is what a lot of the training and discernment is about, is working from the more blatant layers to the more subtle ones by trying to stay on the path. The Buddha called it a middle way, and it's getting that sense of balance. That's a lot of our training and discernment. And if you ever looked at a balance, balances don't stay balanced all the time. They swing back and forth before they can come to a balance. And we have to learn to anticipate that in the practice. Sometimes we lean too far to the left, and then you're going to lean too far to the right, back and forth like this, before you come to any kind of balance. And a lot of the wisdom and discernment that comes in the path is learning how to deal with this. Following a particular tack in your practice and then finding that it goes too far, then you've got to turn around and go back the other way. And then you find you've gone too far the other way, and then you come back, back and forth like this. And it's learning how to deal with the back and forth and the not get frustrated with it. Realizing that when you make mistakes, you're learning lessons. Another aspect of the middle path is a sense of a path that's appropriate for whatever's coming up. In other words, it's just not just middling effort all the time. Sometimes your effort has to be strong. Sometimes it has to be very, very subtle. And again, this is a, requires sensitivity. The Buddha once talked about two kinds of right effort. One is when you, he said, some kinds of suffering require that you really make a concerted effort to deal with them. And others require simply that you watch. And this is a lesson we learn with the breath. Sometimes there are levels of discomfort in the breath that you can actually deal with. Patterns of tension in the body that you can work through by experimenting, by trying this, by trying that, making the breath longer, making the breath shorter, deeper, more shallow, changing your conception of the breath. But sometimes you run up against a brick wall that way. It seems like nothing that you do seems to help. In fact, the more you meddle with the breath, the worse it gets. That's a sign you're getting too picky about what kind of breathing is going to be good enough for you. So you've got to back off and just watch for a while to see whether the problem is in the breath or in the mind. And don't be too quick to come to conclusions. And then when you see something that seems to make sense, Maybe this could be changed a little bit, that could be changed a little bit, then you can get back to meddling with the breath again. It goes back and forth like this. And a lot of the discernment in the path comes with learning when the points are, how far you can push things, and then how far you have, when you reach a point where you have to stop and just watch for a while. Try to do as little as possible. The breath seems too entangled, and you're, the more you work with it, the worse it gets. Just tell yourself, okay, I'm not going to breathe. If the body wants to breathe, that can do it on its own, but I'm not going to participate. And see what happens. Of course, the body's going to have to breathe. Give it a chance to be unmeddled with for a while. And watch what an unmeddled breath is like. And then you get a sense for it. Sometimes the issue comes up in the forms of what how far you can get the mind to settle down. Again, given the level of concentration, given the level of mindfulness you have, maybe you can only settle it down a little ways for the time being, and yet you want more. It's not good enough, especially if you've had better meditations in the past. The current meditation is not measuring up, and you want to push, push, push it to back where it was. And sometimes you can't push, because sometimes the actual pushing is part of the problem. Or if you've been away from the practice for a while, the level of sensitivity in the mind is not what it was, particularly your sensitivity to what you're doing. So get the mind to settle down at least somewhat, and then just stay there for a while. It may not be perfect, but it's good enough. 
and then watch. Until you can see yourself causing some form of stress or suffering. And then you can drop it. And then you move to another level. And then sometimes you have to stay at that level for a while and then just watch again. So the middleness of the middle way is actually the appropriateness of what you're doing to the circumstances you've got. There are no hard and fast rules either that you're not allowed to meddle with the breath at all, or that you have to be meddling all the time, or that you always have to push for greater and greater and greater levels of concentration. Sometimes you have to learn how to be satisfied with what you've got. You know the story about the foolish, inexperienced cow. It's got a nice meadow, nice water, but it looks over the other mountain, and gee, the grass over there looks pretty good too, and the water, I wonder what the water tastes like over there. But you have to go down into a ravine. So the foolish and experienced cow heads down to the ravine. And because it's foolish and inexperienced, it gets stuck in the ravine. That way it can't get back to even where it was before, much less get over to the other side. So when you find a level of concentration, a level of comfort in the breath that seems okay, stick with it for a while. See if you can maintain it. Watch it. Don't push too hard to make it any better until you see clearly yeah, there is something here that's unnecessary, a level of stress, a level of discomfort, a level of disturbance that really doesn't have to be there. That's when you let that go, as it's the stillness that allows you to see. And then that'll, one of the things that allows you to see is precisely what needs adjusting. So the two go together, the doing and the watching. And there's going to be a balance between the two. It's like walking. It's a lot easier to walk first with your right foot, then with your left, then with your right, then with the left. A lot easier than trying to just hop along on your right foot or hop along on your left foot. This is what keeps the path on the middle. Finding the balance between the two. Balance not so much in the sense of a little bit of effort and a little bit of watching, but knowing when which one is appropriate stress, because you've got to have both. But sometimes you need more of one than the other, like the balance. It swings back and forth before it comes to a perfect balance. So John Cha said, we're groping our way in the practice. We like to think that we have the whole thing mapped out ahead of us, but if we knew the map entirely, and if our map were entirely perfect, We'd already be at the end of the path, but it's not that way. The map is just a sketch, and we have to feel our way. And it's your willingness to feel your way, learn from your mistakes. That develops your wisdom, develops your discernment. Sometimes it's a little chastening to see how little wisdom and little discernment you have, but what are you going to do? You make use of what you've got. There's no way you can get more without using what you've got. Otherwise, it's like going down to the gym. You want to go down, but you're embarrassed because your body is so weak and everybody else is so strong. But if you're embarrassed, you never get down there to, to work out. So if you've just got a little bit of discernment and a little bit of concentration, well, make use of what you've got. Because it's only by making use of these things that they grow. Be content with what you've got. Not content in the sense that you're going to stay here forever. But be content with the fact that these are your raw materials. This, these are the tools you have. You've got to start right where you are. And it's really being very clear about what you've got, which you're going to find out as you practice. The practice Part of the practice is meant to throw you up against situations where you come to the end of your rope. And you use your ingenuity to figure out what you should do next. As John Fuhring said, if everything were handed to you on a platter, you'd never learn any discernment. You'd never develop discernment at all. It's by testing it and admitting mistakes, learning from your mistakes, getting clearer and clearer exactly what it is that you've got here. That's how the path opens up. 
the Buddha sometimes would talk about nirvana as being immediately present. Sanditiko, it's right here in the here and now. But also remember there was that time when right after he'd gained awakening and he reflected on whether he could teach or not. He, first he was discouraged because it seemed so subtle. How would he ever teach anybody? But he realized that people could be led towards it step by step. This is why our path is a gradual one, a step by step path, as we're great getting becoming more and more sensitive to what we're doing, what the results are. So that gradually we become more and more sensitive to what is actually right here. And it's in working with this issue of the middleness of the path, what's appropriate right now in terms of our concentration, in terms of staying with something, in terms of pushing a little bit more. That's how we get more and more sensitive to what's going on right here. It's the middleness of the path that develops our discernment, or pursuing the middleness that develops our discernment. And remember, a lot of discernment is seeing how foolish you've been, because that's the only way you're going to get wise. And that's the only way you're going to see things that are of even more value.